Less maintenance is $1,000 per year every year that you save because you have an EV. Thank you, Senator. Finally, Senator Hawley. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Turk, thank you for being here. Nice to see you again. Thanks to both of the witnesses uh, for being here. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about who is who is really benefiting from this administration's climate agenda and from these draconian electric vehicle mandates. So, Mr. Turk, you've already alluded to this. I know you know the answer to these questions. Currently, one nation accounts for 60% of the world's electric vehicle production. That nation is? China. Yeah. One nation accounts for 76% of the world's lithium ion battery production, that nation is. China. Yet your administration, this president's administration, the mandates that you put in place require that two thirds of our new vehicle sales in just the next eight years, two thirds of them be electric vehicles. Your policies are driving us and our supply chains into the hands of our greatest geostrategic enemy, enriching them, enriching their government, while forcing Americans to pay for electric vehicles that on average cost $7,000 more on average than a traditional vehicle, are more expensive to repair and insure, require more frequent replacements of, of everything from tires to component parts. So, uh, Mr. Turk, wh why is it good for the American worker that we force our supply chains to a country that's our greatest rival and adversary? And why is it good for the American consumer? So this is exactly why we're using all the tools that Congress gave us to diversify our supply chains from the mining piece and especially the processing piece, which is where China really has a stranglehold. So we're making significant progress on lithium, on graphite, you name it, the tools that you all have given us to diversify those supply chains and make sure that we're getting the benefits of that. Our U.S. workers are getting the benefits of that. Citizens in St. Louis, I mentioned in my opening statement, some exciting investments that are going on in St. Louis. We want U.S. Uh, workers to benefit from this supply chain and this revolution. And, and China is absolutely competing. China's going whole hog on EVs and the full supply chain of it. And they're going to compete and out-compete unless we're playing and pushing back and competing with them with okay. what we're doing. Here, here's what I don't understand then. Why is it, if that is the case, why is it that you are interpreting the administration's climate law so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which I think, frankly, is bad enough on its own, but you're, you're reinterpreting it now to allow the tax credits to flow to Chinese entities. So now U.S. tax dollars are literally subsidizing Chinese battery makers. Why would we want to do that? Why would we want to not only give our adversary our supply chains and our jobs, but pay them to take them from us? Why does that make any sense? So I would argue, and certainly want to turn to my Deputy Secretary at Treasury, uh, we are not doing that. The How fact, are you not? The fact that with the 30D tax credit, only 13 models qualify at this point. Now, we hope uh, more diversification happens uh, and more models qualify for that tax credit is a good data point that we take this very seriously and we want to have these jobs in the U.S. But let me let me wait. No, wait, 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 wait. I just want to stay with you, Mr. Turk, just because my time is so limited. And this is an important part. And the, and the chairman's brought this up, and I'm glad that he has. This is really, really important. The Inflation Reduction Act, which I did not vote for, but nevertheless, the Inflation Reduction Act said clearly that China, if you are a foreign entity of concern, you don't, which includes China, you don't get the taxpayer subsidy. You don't get the 30D subsidy. You don't get the tax break. And yet, your rule allows Chinese companies to get the tax break. It, 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 it loosens up the restrictions. So now we are subsidizing our rivals. I just don't understand. The chairman's asked you about this repeatedly. I don't understand why we would pay Chinese companies to outcompete us. So I would strongly disagree with that. I spent a lot of time working with the team and we worked hand in hand with our treasury colleagues on the uh, FEOC, the Foreign Entity of Concern, the FIOC, uh, standards and uh, happy to go through the three prongs of that in particular in terms of what our proposal is on the table. Well, this, that's the problem, right? Is that the, is that the law, which again, I didn't support, but the law says just no. It says no. And then you come back and say, it's what we lawyers like to call a multi-factor balancing test, which is usually what courts do when they want to get their way. So it's like, oh, well, let's complicate it. We've got all of these different things. And the effect of it is, this has been widely reported. This isn't my opinion. Everybody understands that what it, what it does is it allows Chinese companies so long as they're not set up within mainland China, but owned and controlled by China, they can now get the tax credit. I just don't understand why we would use our tax money 
to pay the Chinese to make these vehicles. So, so, so we're not. Only 13 models, again, have qualified for that 30D tax credit. Uh, a lot of companies right now, uh, automakers, are scrambling and they're working urgently to make sure that they don't have that. If your rule had no effect, why would you change it? Why wouldn't you just leave the text of, of the IRA in place? Why wouldn't you, the flat bar? All of this is uh, implementing the legislation that's been passed. And happy, again, to get into the details. Certainly, if... Uh, La last thing I've got, because my time's expired, I know other senators are waiting to ask questions. It, it, but this is important, just about the effect on American workers. Just looking at the news reporting on this... If Ford CEO says that EVs are going to require 40% less labor to produce than traditional cars, as production is shifting to the United States, this labor in, uh, on, for instance, uh, uh, batteries, EV, EV batteries, is increasingly being done in factories that are owned, co-owned at least, by foreign entities, and the wages for workers who are usually not unionized are substantially less than the wages for workers in traditional cars. Now, you mentioned my state. In Wentzville, Missouri, for example, we have almost 4,000 workers in a GM plant there. That's just one plant in just one area of my state. I don't want, I want, believe me, I'll take all the jobs you can give me, but I don't want those 3,000 workers to lose their jobs and to have another couple hundred created in some other state in a factory co-owned by a foreign company making half the wages. And that seems to be the trade-off that you're offering to American workers. That doesn't seem like a good trade-off to me. With that, I yield, Mr. Chairman. If you want to respond, Mr. Chair, go ahead, but I yield, Mr. Chairman. I, I just reiterate the number of jobs, 136,000 jobs, thanks to these tools that you've given us, thanks to this president all across the country, including in St. Louis, but all across the country. That's an incredible record, and their incentives, as the chairman well knows, to make sure these are good-paying jobs uh, that we have all across the country. Senator Hickenlooper. 